Hey there. So we're going to talk about how you know you're healing from toxic relationships or from narcissists in your life. My name is Lise Colucci, and I am here to help you understand, heal from, and all of that, the toxic people in your life, toxic relationships, and to help you transform your life after those toxic relationships. So let's just jump in and talk about this. How do you know you're healing? How do you know? People are often stuck and feeling stuck after toxic relationships and feel like they don't really know if they're healing or not, or they they don't know how to tell. It's an extremely complex thing in your life where it is affecting so many areas of your life that there may be parts of your life that just don't feel good. And then there may be other parts of your life that are better, but you don't realize they're better because you're so preoccupied with healing the things that aren't working. And we also get on this healing path where our whole life becomes about creating the healing, right? And we, we focus heavily on the healing. And so then we're always going down that path. What are some of the signs? Then one sign I want to talk about, which is kind of funny, kind of not, is you recognize, and this is one that's me today. <laughs> okay. So you recognize that when you're feeling foggy headed, when you're feeling distracted, when you're feeling like in brain fog out of nowhere, that you aren't always feeling that way, number one, and that you have skills now to minimally recognize it, to say, oh my gosh, I need to slow down. This is what I did two days ago. Girl, slow down. You are triggered right now. You are in something that's, that's just working through, right? And you are a survivor of toxic relationships and, and, and all kinds of other traumas in your life. So this is going to happen. This is part of having CPTSD. This is part of living with being a survivor of toxic people, right? And toxic experiences. So yeah, it's going to happen. And so recognizing it and knowing what to do for yourself, to slow down, to, to get some self-care, to take a break, to whatever it is for you, right? So that's a sign that you're healing. Another thing that you, the way you know you're healing is that oftentimes in your life, you feel lighter. So that's a happy one <laughs> after my harder one. You feel lighter. You just feel lighter inside your body, inside yourself. Even your physical body might feel just like lighter and brighter. Not all the time, but in bits and pieces compared to how it was when you were newly out or still with or like deeply enmeshed in the toxicity. This is a good time to point out the group coaching. If it's something that is sounds good to you, if it's if you're able to, if the times work for you, it is a place for working on what we're talking about here, which is transforming things for yourself so that you get the healing that you need so you can start doing a lot better. <laughs> um, so if you need that, the information's in the main description of every video. We meet Tuesdays, Thursdays, 4.30, Fridays, 11 Pacific. One way to know that you are healing from toxic relationships is that you are able now to accept the reality of the situation, of what the narcissist is and how they are, of how you responded to it and how you react around narcissists, you're able to accept the reality. You're, you're not clinging to unnecessary and un, basically hope that is never going to be met. You're not clinging to the what ifs. You're not clinging to beliefs that you're the problem. You're seeing the reality of the narcissistic person and how they function in relationships. Huge. You get to that point, it everything starts changing. Okay. Um, and you can get there. So this is, if you are not feeling any of these things, do not be discouraged. That means that this is something to look forward to, something, some little markers to see, oh, where am I? And here's the thing, you may feel some of these things like, yeah, I totally accept it until it's with so-and-so until blah, blah, blah. Right. So it's not that it's a, this isn't black and white. This is multicolored and all shades of everything. Okay. And it's going to um, be in different degrees that these things happen. This isn't a, a checklist for, okay, I'm fine now. Or I'm not fine because I don't meet all the criteria, okay? These are just some signs for people who, or for you, if you are feeling like, gosh, this isn't going anywhere. It's a way to look back at how, where you started and where you are. If you're just starting, it's for hope that it actually can get better, okay? So do not take this as anything to judge yourself with because that would be sad, <laughs> right? Don't do that. All right. You aren't trying to get validation for 
the traumas and the and the experiences you've had anymore. Wow, that's a big one. We need the validation. And I'm not saying needing validation is wrong or that you're not healed if you need it now and then. Okay, we all need it now and then. We need, we want, we crave, right? The understanding and the awareness from another person and the compassion from another person. Yes. However, when you're newly out of toxic relationships, when you just are discovering this stuff, when you're so wrapped up in, in trying to get away from them, when they're smearing you, when, when it's intense emotionally and there's a lot of intensity around it, it it's natural and it's, it's what happens where we tell our stories over and over and to everyone that'll listen and we, and we need the validation back. And when we don't get the validation back, it's like, oh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And when someone goes, uh-huh, or, or some other flippant remark, or they don't get it, or they say something rude, like, well, you know, you stayed, we're shot down and we're in that loop. So we're seeking that dopamine through that telling of the experience to help boost us up when we're so low, right? But we're also seeking just someone to get it. But the thing is, someone can get it. And then we still have to tell someone else and tell someone else. It's not bad. I'm not criticizing or saying this is wrong. It's just what we do. It's hard not to. We are focused on understanding and healing and fixing this. And we don't want other people to experience it. And we also want to relate to others who do. So nothing wrong with it. But when you get to the point where that's not the first thing you think of when you talk to someone or if someone says, how you doing? You don't go straight there. And when someone says, hey, whatever happened with your ex? You go, you know what? That was toxic. I don't even want to talk about it. And you, and you mean it. Then you know that there's a level of healing that has happened. You think about things other than the narcissist. This goes hand in hand with that one, right? Like you think about your own interests. You think about other people. You look around and see colors. You recognize there's life outside of this toxicity. You're not stuck in the grips of it where you're just like held in place, frozen, feeling all of it all the time. You're able to take some deep breaths and you're able to enjoy your feet on the ground and your head in the air and like walking through space, right? Like you're able to, to be present to yourself and to be present to what's going on around you. That's a sign of healing. That is why I focus on that here. That's why I drill it into all every video here. That is a major way to get yourself to healing is to become more aware of self and to become more embodied and to become more um, compassionate with oneself as you move through time and space on the planet in this life. You allow your emotions, you allow your emotions you're not trying to stop them. You're not trying to block them. You are not, you're no longer fearful that once they show up, they're going to overwhelm you and you can get there. Okay. This is, it's baby steps to get there sometimes. Um, but it's a sign you're healing. If you can sit with your emotions and let the waves of sadness and the grief come and allow yourself to take the time it takes to heal you may still feel some big, heavy, intense emotions and you're able to sit with it and process it differently because you've learned skills and tools and, and you've given yourself the space and time you've needed to get there. Another sign is you start questioning the inner dialogue that is critical towards yourself. You start questioning the things when you say, yeah, it was bad, but if only I were, if only I were better, that wouldn't happen. If only it's, it's my fault. When you start questioning those things, when you hear the narcissist voice in your head belittling you and you're doing it from your own thoughts, when you are, if you grew up with narcissistic parents, when you no longer listen to the dialogue they planted in your head, you still hear it maybe like criticisms and perfectionism and all that, but you you question it and you say, hey, wait a minute, is that my thought or was that an indoctrination from a toxic person? So yeah, that is a huge sign that you are healing yourself. Self-care, when you know you're healing, when self-care is not just a concept, when it's not just an action, but when it is part of your daily routine, when it is part of your life, when it is the first thing you think of when you feel anxious and upset, or I mean, not the first thing, but you know, a, a first thing, like in the top five, when you think, oh my gosh, I need some self-care right now. And you have means to do it and you have the capacity to do it and you have the will to do it and you and you do it, right? When you take action towards self-care, you're already starting to heal. And when you when that becomes a habit, 
you're, you're getting there, okay? Are setting boundaries in your life. When you are setting boundaries in your life, you are setting an example for yourself of care, of strength, of inner support for oneself and of your own will and your own choices, okay? And all of that takes some healing to get to, right? And especially when you're setting boundaries without guilt or setting boundaries with guilt and telling the guilt, yeah, you're an old, not so good friend that I need to like not listen to. Guilt, you were put there by my mother or whatever, my father, my whatever, okay? So yeah, and then yes, keeping them, sticking with those boundaries, having conviction and clarity behind your boundaries that allows you to just hold them in place. Um, yeah, no matter what someone says. You feel a measure of indifference toward the narcissistic person. You may always have some emotional trigger or some emotional response to them, but to them in their personal life of who they are, you start to become indifferent. And I know a lot of people are like, ah, I just wanna get there, how do I get there? It's through all of this. I mean, the number one thing is allowing them to be who they are and accepting it. Okay, that's how they are. That is who they are, how they are how they are in relationships, it's how they function, it's how they think, it has nothing to do with me, it is not mine to deal with and it is not my problem, right? But it's really hard when you have had so much hurt from someone to get there because we hang on to, yeah, but they did this to me. Yeah, but it isn't fair. Yeah, but it isn't right. You see, it's letting go of thinking we can control it or we have any measure of, look, we're gonna make a difference somehow in, in this whole thing by, sticking the course and making sure they get it, making sure they hear it. You know what I mean? So indifference really is the most disarming, as they say, thing you can do to a narcissistic person. The number one thing they want is your attention. After that, it's control. Yeah, they want attention more than they want control. They want your attention. They want your focus. It's supply. Okay. That's what we say when we, we say supply is what we mean. Okay. So it is... To, to have indifference is an absence of supply. There you go. You, another way you know you are healing is you're starting to connect, you are connecting or you're deeply connected with your own passions and your own drive and your own joys and, your, and the things about you that make you you and you are connected and learning to connect with self. That sounds like that could be taken in different ways. I, I'm not saying we become selfish, okay? I wouldn't say that, although I'd love to, because <laughs> it would be easier. But for most of us, that isn't going to happen in our life. So we are becoming self-aware in a way that allows us to actually know who we are. We're connecting with our authenticity, and we're connecting with, um, you're connecting with the goodness of you, and the quirks of you, and all of you, of who you are, what you think, not what you were taught to think by toxic people or, or the society or anybody else, but your actual think, thoughts and feelings. And you get to that place through a lot of, you know, exercises in self-awareness and a lot of letting go of the indoctrination that these toxic people have put in your head. And it, you know, this takes time to get here and you recognize manipulation now. If you are on your healing journey, and getting somewhere with it, right? You can recognize manipulation when you see it. You can call out gaslighting. You see projection. You see somebody triangulating. You see the baiting. You see the grooming. You start seeing it. So when we say, here's a list of red flags, you don't have to go, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and read the list. You see it, okay? And it's not from study. It's from being happy and joyful and having someone's pulling your energy away from you, pulling your attention away from you, feeling a no and having someone convince you to a yes, feeling, um, oh, this is how this happened. And having somebody else tell you that's not how it happened. So you see the, you see the gaslighting, right? So you start to see the manipulations as they're happening. And that can happen early on in healing as you're learning what gaslighting is. And as you're learning what projection is and how narcissists and toxic people treat people. So that can happen really early. So yeah, you see these, all of these things can happen at any time in your healing. And they're, you're not better because you're farther. <laughs> okay. And you're not worse 
because none of this makes sense to you. All right. You are just where you are. And if you your goal is to transform things beyond where you are into something that you would like for your life, then this kind of talk can help you think, I want that. How do I get that piece? I want that piece. How do I get that piece? Right. And so, again, this is where sometimes coaching can come into play. So, check out the information in the description. There's links for coaching, group coaching, and peer support there. Um, I started a new Facebook group, excellent for this topic. Okay. So, go check that out if you need it. And also, while you're doing all that, hit the thumbs up and subscribe for here. <laughs> okay. Your life is becoming more social. That can mean simply, you stand up, you look people in the eye, you maybe smile a little or not. You um, approach life with a more open attitude toward other human beings. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.